Okay, good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. Good, glad you're all here and join. Hopefully, as I say, hopefully you had a good week and pray for your week ahead. And just thank the Lord for all, all He gives each day He gives us. If you would, let's uh, let's all stand. Turn to page 55, please. Page 55 at the cross. We'll sing the first and the last verse. <clears throat> page 55. <clears throat> Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day a drops of grief can never repay the debt of where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart roll away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Amen. Oh, amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you once again asking you to bless this day and watch over us. And Lord, your will be done in the hearts and lives of each one as we progress through the morning and through the evening hour. Lord, it might be a day that we can certainly look back on and, and praise you and give you thanks for what all you have done uh, for us. And uh, Father, we do thank you for the ones that have come this morning. Thank you for the ones that are viewing from home. And Lord, I just pray that your will will be done in every heart and every life this morning. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can be seated. I believe at this time that we're going to take our offering. And uh, so if you have a gift, just raise your hand and Brother Cross will take care of it, okay? Come on. I should have said that after we got through praying. Lead us, Brother Cross. Amen. God bless you as you give. Okay, uh, please remember these, if you will. Of course, uh, Pat Hewlett going home to be with the Lord. Uh, viewing will be tomorrow evening here at the church at 5 to 7. And then uh, the uh, service of uh, viewing will be at 10 o'clock. And then uh, 11 o'clock, the service will start here at the church. So please remember that, if you will, and pray for the family. Uh, that the Lord's will be done their life and they would uh, get over, you know, it's sometimes it's very painful to lose a loved one and, and of course, uh, uh, been looking forward 
uh, I'm sure Pat had been looking forward to the day when she'd be home with the Lord, and finally uh, she has arrived in heaven, and we're grateful for that. Uh, Michelle Sims, she's with us this morning and have gone through some uh, problems and health issues, and I believe you have some more coming up, right? Yeah. Health issues coming up? Chemo, okay, all right, chemo. Uh, and then, of course, uh, please remember Gary Ratliff uh, has uh, uh, cancer of the left leg, and so please remember him. Jim Summers, uh, he is going to try to come for the morning service. He said, I don't know how long I'll last, but I'm going to try to come, so uh, he'll, uh, hopefully he'll be here today. And so, and of course, uh, don't want to rush it and, and by any means, and, but uh, pray for him. And then Becky's going to have surgery in August uh, the 14th, so uh, pray uh, for her, if you will. And then also, uh, Wanda Clark is going to have surgery on the 14th of this month, and so pray for her as well. And, and then Bethany uh, got over a toe uh, problem issue, and so uh, we're glad that she is doing well. And please pray for the church, uh, pray for the pastor and leadership of their church, praying for one another that the Lord's will will be done uh, in the hearts and lives of people and uh, that we would remain healthy and, and strong uh, for the Lord. And then, of course, the policemen and, and the military, uh, pray for them as well. And so I uh, we'll want you to pray uh, for our first responder. And, of course, we had uh, two, mil or two policemen uh, that uh, were killed uh, this past week, and, and so we'd like to remember them. And one was very close. Uh, lived in Franklin, uh, graduated from high, high school in, in Whiteland, and so uh, pray for him, if you will. Uh, uh, Officer Smith, no relation, uh, but uh, I just pray for the family, if you will. And then missionaries, and we mentioned uh, uh, last week, I believe, or the week before, that we're going to just pray for the teens, a uh, teen camp uh, that's coming up very quickly. And uh, pray for the counselors, pray for the uh, uh, campers, uh, that the Lord's will will be done and much would be accomplished uh, through that. And so uh, pray for them, if you will. Uh, do we have any prayer requests in this section? Anyone at all? How about in this section? Uh, yes, Lynn. Pardon me? Unspoken. How many unspoken? Certainly. Certainly, there's others that, that. Anybody else in this section? Far section? How about nothing? Okay. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can approach your throne. And once again, we uh, pray for the ones that are under the weather and sick and having health issues. And Lord, we just pray that uh, your will will be done in the hearts and lives of people this morning and our people, Lord, that you would just bless them and watch over them, keep them safe, and bring them back to health once again. And, and we'll praise you and thank you for all that you do. In, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, Brother Dave. Okay, if you would, take your hand. We'll turn to page 257, please. Peace. Page 257, farther along. Again, we'll sing the first and the last verse. Tempted and tried, we're oft made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are Shine with 
will understand it all by and by when we see Jesus coming to glory when he comes from his home in the sky then we shall meet Understand it all by and by. Farther along, we'll know all about it. Farther along, we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand. Understand it all by and by. Amen. Thank you, Bethany. Thank you, Brother Dave. Appreciate it. And, uh, Turn in your Bible, if you will, to John chapter 8. Get back with our study. Uh, last week, of course, uh, Brother Turner was here, and uh, uh, he was uh, supposed to uh, teach upstairs in the, in the pastor's class, uh, but uh, I, you know, made it, uh, he's has a hard time climbing stairs, so I bring him down and uh, uh, join in here, and so that's why he was here uh, teaching last week, and so we'll get back with our study uh, today, and, and hopefully we'll make some progress in it, but John chapter 8 and uh, verse 12, we'll start there. Uh, if you remember where we see uh, that uh, the, the Bible said, uh, talk to the woman uh, that was caught in adultery and told her to go sin no more. And now we see that it says uh, in verse uh, 12, uh, it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them. And so, uh, of course, we know that the Pharisees and the scribes has interrupted the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was very rude the way that they just broke in while he was teaching and they just uh, presented the woman uh, caught in adultery, uh, taken in adultery, and brought her before there, uh, brought her for, before the Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, everybody was there as well. And, and of course, we know the result of that, and on and on we could go. But then it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them. And this is what he says. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Now, that statement will stand on its own. Uh, you know, you don't have to have anything else other than that. And, but, of course, we know that there's other scriptures. Uh, if you will, when Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, look back, if you will, at uh, John chapter 1. John chapter 1, uh, if you'll turn back there. And, and I, I believe that it's important that we look back. Uh, we've already looked at it, but, you know, I, I think as uh, John progresses, uh, it reveals more uh, than what has already been said. Uh, and, of course, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Uh, we could have mentioned that when we back there. But look at verse 3. It says, all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And so we see here that he is the creator, the creator of all things. He is the creator of man. And, and that is important to know that. And then in verse 4, it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And so uh, if you will go on down and look at verse 9, where that it says this, that it was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And so here we see uh, the creator of 
of this world, the Lord Jesus Christ, it says there, that true light which lighteth every man, every man that cometh into the world. There is not an individual that is born uh, in this world uh, that God doesn't touch in a way. Here it says, a lighteth every man. He gives light to every individual. Then look, if you will, and I wish you would uh, uh, stay with me and turn to these verses because they're very important. In uh, Romans chapter 2, and if you will look at verse 15, uh, where that it tells us there, uh, in verse 15 of chapter 2 of Romans, which showed the work of the law written in their hearts. In their hearts. Of course, if you'd go back in verse 14, it says uh, that uh, uh, for, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, although we are not under the law and never have been, the Gentiles, but naturally we do things that are in the law or contained in the law, uh, like uh, uh, commit murder and different things like that. Just by uh, nature, uh, we do those things, as it says there, uh, and these have not the law, are a law unto themselves. Although God has placed the, uh, the law of, of God in the heart and life of every individual, that's the Ten Commandments, by the way, and then the law of Moses, is what the, uh, uh, the first five books of the Bible, wh what we see here, that's the book where Moses wrote uh, to the Jewish people, and of course it has an effect upon uh, Gentiles as well. And it says, which showed the work of the law written in their hearts and, and, and their conscience, also bear witness and their thoughts, the means of, uh, while accusing or excusing one another. And, of course, we know that this is the moral law or the law of God uh, given to every individual. Then if you look back to Romans chapter 1 and verse 19 and uh, in, in verse 20, uh, where that we see here uh, that it tells us, uh, because that which may be known of God is manifested unto them. Now, here we see that every individual uh, that is born in this world, uh, it says, of uh, which may be known of God. Everything about God is made manifest to them or revealed to every individual that is born into this world. Uh, doesn't that do away with evolution? Uh, evolution, uh, when a, a person is born, he is born with the idea that God created the heavens and the earth. And as it, they, they begin to progress through and study and things like that, then they come up with evolution and other things like that. But it says, may be known of God is manifested in them, for God had showed it unto them. God has showed it unto them. And of course, uh, by looking at that verse and other verses of Scripture, uh, they... Uh, the Gentiles or everyone born in this world has the capacity to recognize the existence of God and the nature, the natural attributes of God, uh, every one of them. And then look at verse 20, if you will. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, clearly seen. And so every individual born in this world has these in their heart. And it says, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. They, uh, they know uh, whether they continue knowing it or not, but they do know. And, and so we find that in the, in the word of God. Go back, if you will. In John chapter 8, and notice uh, once again in verse, uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 12, it says, And Jesus spake, and then I'm a light of the world. And then it says, He that followeth me, 
shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And again, we see I am the light of world. And notice, if you will, where that we've already covered, and we see that they are, uh, they know everything, and God has placed it in their heart. But then, notice, but shall have light of life. Every individual born into this world has light. Every individual has light. And we have, know that it, it's uh, the light of God's law, the natural, uh, the moral law of God has been placed in the heart of every individual. But then we see there's something else. As it says there, but shall have light. You mean that, uh, uh, that uh, they have light? Yes. But then for the believer, he has more than light. Uh, notice it again. But shall have the light of life. And that makes the difference. The Gentiles, uh, unsaved Gentiles, have light. But as a believer, we have the light of life. And that makes all together difference in this world. And so uh, it says, it, again in verse 13, uh, the Pharisees therefore said unto them, There thou bearest record of thyself, and thy record is not true. And of course, we, uh, we have just heard the statement from the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the light of the world. And, of course, uh, we, we know that to mean that he is deity, that he is the creator of all things. And, of course, he just made that statement when he said, I am the light of the world. And, of course, he was saying, I am God. And, and of course, we know the Pharisees, the Pharisees understood what he was saying by the, uh, the words, the Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. They understood the record that he had brought to them. And so they, they could not claim ignorance or anything like that. They knew that, but they did go on to say, thy record is not true. Now, why would they say that? Well, we see here uh, that in, in the word of God, uh, we, and you have to go back in the Old Testament, which we'll not do. Uh, we see that they said, uh, and of course, understanding that they, they were looking at the record of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says uh, in the Old Testament, Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Elohim. Uh, and of course, they knew that. They knew the Old Testament uh, law of Moses. Uh, and it says the light of God. Uh, that meant the light of God. Jehovah Elohim. Elohim means that the light of God had shown to, the, uh, to everybody. And, of course, the Old Testament over and over plainly teaches this truth. It plainly teaches this truth. And so we see the, the Pharisees and the scribes uh, claim that they just simply did not understand what they, that they were saying, he was saying, but they said, uh, about himself, and uh, that was false. Uh, you, he, they said, your, your record is not true. Uh, and, of course, we know where Jesus says in verse 14, uh, he says, uh, Je uh, Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, my record is true, for I know whence I come and whether I go, but you cannot tell whence I come and whether I go. And, of course, here we see uh, the, the Lord was replying to unbelieving Pharisees and scribes. And, of course, we see that Jesus just comes right out. And, and of course, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, as you read the scriptures here, uh, this is the most forceful time that Jesus has replied uh, to, to these people. Uh, to the Jewish people, to the scribes and Pharisees, in a way that uh, they would uh, pay attention to. And it says, I bear record. Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. 
And, of course, he says, I know whence I come. I know where I come from, and I know where I'm going. And, and so it says, I know whence I come and whether I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come or whether I go. And, of course, we see that the Lord, once again, was claiming, I am re- telling them, revealing the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, this is uh, illustrated uh, back in John chapter 1 and verse 5. Turn back there, if you will, a word that we see uh, that it says in uh, verse 5, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And so the light was shining in darkness, which were the, the Jewish people. They were, they were in darkness, and of course it says there, the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And they just simply could not understand what the Lord Jesus Christ was bearing record to. They just simply could not uh, deal with that because uh, they were in darkness. And of course we see that uh, you know, as time goes by, even today, there's millions and millions of people that are in darkness. They just cannot comprehend the, uh, the light. Uh, when, when the light begins to shine, what do they do? They, they revert to darkness. And, of course, the darkness gets uh, dimmer as you remove yourself from light. And so we're living in a day and age when the people have just uh, removed themselves, everything about the light of God and the light, and that's why we see that people are in darkness, and of course we see they were just simply blinded to the truth. And the farther you get away uh, from the light, the darker it gets. Uh, That's all you can say. And look at verse 15, if you will word that it tells us in John chapter 15. It says, ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And so look, if you will, uh, ye uh, ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. Well, we see that he had already made the statement back in the, in the scriptures, I think it's in John 5, and, and verse uh, 22, uh, where that we see uh, that he had already made this statement. In verse 22, For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. And so we see here that if you are not careful, you will take that the Lord Jesus is uh, just saying something that is, is not true because he is going to judge one day. And, and so uh, we see there uh, in that verse, uh, ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. I judge no man why? I judge no man after the flesh. He said, every time I judge, it's going to be by the word of God, by the word of my Father. It will not be uh, by the flesh. And, of course, that's what they were judging the Lord Jesus Christ about. Uh, They had uh, uh, seen him and walking around, and here he was, uh, uh, born uh, in in sinful flesh in the likeness of man. Of course, him without sin, but he was in the likeness of sinful man. And, of course, they confused that with a deity. And, of course, they had forgotten all about him being virgin born, uh, uh, coming from heaven and things like that. And they thought that uh, uh, Joseph was his father, the carpenter's son, as we've uh, looked in the scriptures and things of that nature. But we see that they were judging after the flesh. In other words, they were judging by what they saw. What they saw. And what did they see? They saw a man. Although without sin, they saw a man. And they said, how in the world can a man uh, claim that he is the light of the world? 
and, and of course, again, they were confused. Uh, but we see that the Bible telling us uh, in the Word of God that he will judge by the truth of the Word of God, not by just uh, uh, judging by the flesh. And he says, uh, when I judge, it's going to be true uh, uh, because he says, I'm not alone. Uh, in verse uh, 16, it says, uh, yet if I, ju if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. And so here we find that he says, my judgment is true because I'm not alone in this. And then, of course, he said he and his father uh, agreed upon that, the one that sent him. And, of course, the Bible says in John chapter 10 and uh, verse 30, uh, we'll get that when we hit that again, but he says, I and my Father are one. And, of course, that's been repeated over and over, that he and his Father was one. And, of course, we see that both the Father and the Son, they agree. Do they not? Sure they do. Why? Because they're one. They're one. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ is deity. A and, of course, he is part of the Godhead. Uh, the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, he is part of the Godhead. So uh, that w when we see that they, they have to degree, agree upon everything, and of course, that's why Jesus said, I speak not only of what my Father has revealed to me. Of course, he was under subjection of, the, of his Father. He was a lowly servant. And he didn't want to step his, overstep his bounds uh, by doing anything else. He came into the world to serve and different things like that, although he was deity. And, of course, the Bible says that they agree upon this earth. Then look, if you will, in verse 17, uh, where that we see that it says, and we'll read verse 17 and 18 together. And it uh, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men are, is true. I, I, I am, and of course there is deity, I am one that beareth witness of my Father, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. And so here we find uh, the Lord's testimony here was backed up by the law of Moses. By the law of Moses. And of course we know from the scriptures or whatever he, what he said here, uh, the law required two witnesses. Two witnesses. And of course we see that the Bible says uh, in the scriptures uh, that uh, if you go back into John chapter 5 and verse 37, uh, we see that he says, My father uh, bore witness uh, of me. Or the Son. And so we see that the Lord Jesus uh, has already, the Father has already bore witness of him. And then not only that, but John the Baptist. John chapter 1, and, and uh, you'll see there in verse 6, 7, 8, or somewhere around there, you'll see John the Baptist bore witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. A bore witness. And then Peter, remember him? When he made the, the, the statement, where will we go? You have the words of eternal life. And so that was bearing witness uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but we see uh, that uh, even though uh, the Lord Jesus met the requirement of the law, they were still rejected him. The ones that were supposed to be upholding the law, the Pharisees and the scribes, were the one that were trying to destroy uh, the very law of Moses uh, by not uh, fulfilling what the law had required of them in, in the word of God. And so uh, they still rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? They were in darkness. They were in darkness. They just could not see uh, at all. And so we find that, they, that it says there, I, I am one that beareth witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness 
of me. And so here we find that they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. And look at verse 19, if you will, as we try to progress here. Uh, it says, Then said they unto him, Where is the Father? Where is your Father? Jesus answered, uh, Ye, ye uh, neither know me nor my Father. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And, of course, uh, we know from the Scriptures uh, where that we see that, uh, turn back into Matthew chapter 11, in verse uh, uh, 27, if you will. Uh, I think this bears light upon what we're talking about. And, you know, understanding the scriptures is important. Instead of just reading over them and understanding what's taking place, it says, all things are delivered unto me of my Father. In other words, his Father has given him everything, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he whomsoever the Son will reveal. And so in that verse of Scripture, you see that the Bible says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, are given unto me by my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, but the Father. But what, what is he talking about? The only way that people are going to know God is to know the Son. You'll never know God without Jesus Christ. Revealing the Lord Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. That, you know, you can search the scriptures and, and uh, it tells you about God and all like that. But you'll never understand God or God will not fully be revealed to the individual except through the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, save the Son and he uh, to whom uh, whomsoever the Son will reveal him. And so we see the Lord Jesus Christ reveals God the Father and only by, by that. And you know, there's a lot of people even today, claim that they know God, but they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. That can never happen. That will not be, that is not real. And that's why so many people will say, when you ask them the question, are you going to heaven? They will say something like this, I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Why? Because they do not know the Son. They are not saved. And so they, they have a hope. But where, where we see here in the scriptures, uh, uh, that does away with all hope. All hope is, disappears when you begin to see the scriptures and where the uh, Lord Jesus Christ reveals the Father unto uh, 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 the Son uh, uh, reveals the Father unto individuals. Uh, going back and looking in the scriptures, if you will, again in verse 19 where it says uh, there, Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? And Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, you would have known the father. You have known me. Ye shall have known of my Father also. And so here we find in the scriptures uh, that uh, we find that the Bible telling us uh, Jesus Christ and his Father are one. They're one. And so you have to know the Son, and then the Son will reveal the Lord Jesus Christ unto a lost and dying world. Uh, notice, if you will, in verse 20, uh, in the scriptures here, uh, where that we see that it says, uh, These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man lay hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Now, here we see the treasure, and, and I believe that this needs to be uh, uh, explained a little bit uh, because of the treasure 
was also named of, uh, of, the, uh, of the place of women. The place of women. And the treasury in that, uh, that place, it was common knowledge, and everybody could come in. And so the scribes and the Pharisees brought the woman caught in adultery or taken in adultery, brought her before the Lord in the treasury. And that's the only place that she could have been, is in the treasury. As it says, these words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. Uh, And so we see here it was in in the temple, uh, in the treasury department uh, of the temple that he was speaking at. And, of course, it's very interesting. I looked this up, uh, you know, just for uh, knowledge, I guess, uh, for you. Uh, The treasurer had uh, 13 uh, bronze chests uh, to receive taxes and the free will offering. Of uh, of these chests, nine were uh, for legal payment of the worshipers. The legal payment of the worshipers. And four were for free will offerings, for free will offerings. And so we see that there there was a need for the treasury being in the temple because of free will offerings and the taxes and different things to keep the government going. Uh, But then notice, if you will, in the latter part, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Now, what does that speak to us about? What does that say? Well, we see that it says, this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ was voluntary. He voluntarily laid down his life, and of course it backs up by Scripture. But here for the first time, he revealed to them that it says, no man lay hands on him. Uh, you, you remember, was it Pilate that said to the Lord Jesus, do you not know that I have power uh, to release you or to crucify you? Pilate had no power at all. No power. Nobody has power other than what God allows individuals have. If they, if, if they, you know, just like Nebuchadnezzar, God gave him power uh, to become one of the world's greatest empires, but it was only by God that he was able to accomplish that. Uh, you mean God made uh, Nebuchadnezzar evil? No, he was already evil before God used him in the way that he did. And so here we see it says, no man lay hands on him. And so it was completely voluntary that he laid down his life. And on his time, not anybody else's, uh, will the Lord Jesus Christ be crucified. There is a time, and of course we know that it won't be very long until he will be uh, placed on the cross and different things like that. But it will be his time. Nobody else's time. And so uh, we see there the Bible telling us uh, very clearly, uh, uh, and he says, for his hour was not yet come. His time was not yet. Nobody's going to do anything. And you know, that's the same way with us. We might say we're going to do this and do that, but it's going to be according to God's time. Not according to our time, but according to God's time. And so we we see that in the scripture. And then notice, if you will, where we find in verse uh, 21 where it says, uh, Then uh, said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins, and whether I go, ye cannot come. And, of course, here we see once again, uh, again meaning, uh, Jesus again uh, said, uh, then said, say, uh, said Jesus unto them again. He had already told them in chapter 1 and verse the third, uh, 33 and 34 
of what he is repeating here in a similar uh, statement that he made. And so he just simply said, I'm going my way. I will be leaving this earth. I'm going my way. And, of course, it was going to be up to heaven where he was going. And he says, uh, you're going to try to seek me. But then he says, ye shall die in your sin. And, of course, uh, if you know the Old Testament scriptures, and, of course, later on in the New Testament where we see the Jews, how that the Jews are undergoing undergoing uh, uh, trials and, and uh, persecution like they've never had before. And at that particular time, they're going to call upon Messiah, Christ. They're going to call upon him, but the Bible says he will not answer them, and then they will die in their sins. That's what Jesus was telling the Jewish people, you are going to die in your sins. Uh, you're going to try to seek me when you need me, but I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be there for you. And you will die in your, your sin. And it says, uh, there, whether I go, you cannot come. Why? Well, the Bible tells us very clearly uh, why they could not come. Uh, you know, over and over in Scripture, you see that. Uh, they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. So why, why, why couldn't they come? Because they had directed the Savior. And, of course, it was impossible for them uh, to do otherwise to go and be with him because uh, it just would not happen. Well, our time is gone, and so I think I'm going to stop there on... Uh, before I get in verse 22, I won't be able to finish that. And so we'll start from there. Uh, but we see that in this verse, uh, you will find a, a present and a future application. You'll see a future and, and a present application there uh, in, uh, that uh, the Lord is saying. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you. Once again, for the scriptures, and I ask you, dear Lord, that you might give us a clear thought, and Lord, that we might uh, just uh, uh, start the beginning and, and build upon what we have said, and Lord, that it might be a prophet to them, uh, individuals that have heard, and Lord, we just pray uh, that your will will be done in the morning service. I ask you to lead, guide, and direct us in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you're dismissed.